middle grade. You've written a wonderful middle grade novel, uh, Fairy Swap, and I am terrible at about summarizing other people's novels. If anybody ever checks out my reviews at, at middlegradeninja.com, you'll notice I use a lot of quotes direct from the book. And the reason is, is because I, I figured that the author already told the story, right? I can't screw it up if I, if I just say what they said. Uh, so since I have you, the author of Fairy Swap on, tell a esteemed audience a little bit about that book and the premise. Uh, well, it's told from the point of view of two boys. One is a fairy and one is a human boy. And uh, the fairy tricks the human into switching places with him in his fairy realm because he's a runaway prince. And the boy is desperate to get back to his home, in, which is actually uh, in England near uh, Stonehenge, which has an important role to play in the magic of the story. Um, and he's, he's trying to get back home because his dad is kind of delinquent, his mom is gone, and his little sister is there all on her own. And he's been kind of taking care of her. So he's he's desperate to get back to make sure nothing goes wrong with his kid sister. And of course, he has creatures and friends and enemies that he has to fight along the way to get back, not least the fairy prince himself, who does not want to return to his realm. And so the story follows their sort of back and forth. and. I had a lot of fun with that book, um, partly because of the voice. Um, I had to sort of conjure this ancient fairy Irish type voice. And I got a wonderful narrator to do the audiobook version of it. He's a Irishman who moved to the United States. And so he has like a really dead on American accent and a dead on Irish accent. And he had a lot of fun doing the two voices in that book. Um, it's a great one for kids because um, it's fun and it's an adventure, but it also, you know, I'd like to bring in my science and math stuff. So the, the magic in that story is mathematically based. So the fairies in that story are actually sneaking back to Earth to steal mathematical knowledge because that powers up their magic. And that plays like a key part in the story. So that was fun to do as well. And I love that metaphor, especially from an author uh, who does have a background in engineering and, and very science heavy, um, because it's it, it's a wonderful metaphor, I imagine, for your mind, uh, going back and forth between the, the left side and the right side and, and kind of separating how one informs the other. Sure. Or am I reading too much into it? No, read away. I, I think <laughs> every story is only half written when it's written. You know, it's what what lives in the reader's mind makes it the other half. So I love when people find stuff in my stories like that. That's great. Oh, so is it your standard answer to a reader theory is did, when you read that, did it make the story better for you? Then absolutely, <laughs> that, that's what it was. Yes, that's absolutely what I wrote. <laughs> it makes sense. And you've done, um, well, let me ask you this. Uh, there's obviously, there's a theory um, put forward about the, uh, purpose of Stonehenge within the novel that's that's fun and fantastical. Do you, I know you haven't seen a flying saucer, but do you have a theory about what Stonehenge was used for? Or can you solve that mystery for us here today? I don't. I, I'm i not privy to any more than the average Google search would be. But um, I, I do hope to travel there actually some day. So maybe I'll get some kind of vibe off of it when I get out to actual England and visit the stones themselves. But I, I think well, perfect. You'll, you'll come back and you'll say, Rob, you'll never believe this. I went out and I saw a Stonehenge, a flying saucer descended while I was looking at it. I have so much to tell you and your audience <laughs> about. It's going to be fantastic. 